Hi everyone, welcome back to this session of PMP Drag and Drop Questions. It's been an absolute blast so far doing with this with you, and I hope you've been following from the beginning. There are 110 in total, and it's such a wonderful way to prepare for your PMP, and also to get up to speed and really review before you take the exam. It's so cool, and it's been a real bunch of fun so far. We're getting them from the Pembok Guide 7th Edition, Process Groups Practice Guide, and the Agile Practice Guide, just to get a whole range of the project scenarios. And we're looking at definitions of things, the order and processes of things in the project process, and scenarios and problem solving. And so that's our drag and drop questions and how we're going. And of course, I will make this download available in my Udemy course, uh, my PMP Udemy course, which is currently the highest rated PMP Udemy course. It's been wonderful to have the students there and I think you'll enjoy it too. Let's get into the first question. Okay, one of my favorites, agile versus predictive. Now, what have we got here? Agile is pretty simple. I love this stuff. Product and sprint reviews. Definitely, we're having a sprint review at the end to see if our increment matches the, what the customer wanted. Uh, close customer contact, we're always going to have. So we prefer talking face-to-face -to, -face to get all of those extra visual cues and tonality cues that you don't pick up on when you're sending an email. Uh, we're going to have a complete requirements document in Predictive, and we're probably going to have system documentation instead of reviewing the actual product. And in predictive, we might have a schedule network diagram to show the order of our things, like a, a, on a Gantt chart. But in agile, it's a similar idea, but we're going to have a product roadmap instead. So really just called a different thing. You could use uh, a Gantt chart for your product roadmap, and that's what I personally do in the real world. All right, that was a pretty good one to kick off with. I like that one. So how did you guys go? Let's go into the next one. Planning schedule management. Oh, these are process groups, inputs, tools and techniques, and outputs. Oh, these are tricky. Okay. Planning, well, hang on. The first one's not too bad because what's the first one that we always do? We're planning schedule management and we're creating our schedule management plan. So how we're going to manage our schedule. If we're sequencing our activities, oh, precedence diagramming method, we might need to know uh, the precedence diagramming method for what comes first and what comes next. We're sequencing it. Okay, let's try that. Developing the schedule is going to, oh goodness, that's probably going to be the critical path method and we can move that if we need to. Defining the activities. Gosh, this is actually pretty hard. <laughs> um, defining the activities, we're going to decom uh, use decomposition because we're taking our scope and decomposing it into the activities. And, oh, I, I thought that was strange. We've got two sequence activities. So leads and lags can be used here at the same time as our precedence diagramming method in sequence activities. That's why I thought it was strange. Let's double check and make sure that we got that correct. Well, the other way around, but both of them were for sequence activities. So thank goodness that was pretty good. Page 89 under plan schedule management. Very handy information to have. Okay, that was a bit trickier. How did you guys go with that one? Procurement now, a benchmark for our quote prepared by an outside professional estimator. And we could have uh, commercial databases of information or we could go to, um, to consultancy firms like KPMG or McKinsey who have that information on uh, other people in the industry all of these we look at as our independent cost estimates. Defining the scope to be included in the contract and the terms of reference, that's going to be our statement of work, what the vendor needs to bid on, and used to ensure that the prospective vendors all have a common understanding. We're going to hold a bidder conference so everyone is on the same page and no one gets preferential treatment that could come back to bite us later. That's, uh, that's great. We did it. Great. Excellent. Page 74. Fantastic. And another one. Whew, I think these are getting trickier uh, now. So uh, I hope, hopefully it's not always getting trickier up to 110. But if you want to check that out, Pumbok Guide 7th Edition, Working with Procurements. All right. Procurements again. Oh, goodness. Uh, used to explain the difference, uh, the list of potential sellers. Uh, oh, expand the list of potential sellers. 
How do we do that? We advertise. So if you've got a government contract, particularly, you might need to advertise uh, that, that opportunity so all of the vendors have an opportunity to bid. And again, then they can't come back later and say, well, we never heard about this and it's unfair. So it just keeps us safe. Uh, contested items in a project where the buyer and seller can't agree on any changes, that's a claim and claims administration. And last one, details on how we choose our vendor, including capability. That's how we select them, our source selection criteria. Let's double check. That's come through. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Hopefully that's the last one on procurement. Goodness me. Okay, more ETOs. Goodness, this is a really tricky one. Okay, subdividing project deliverables into smaller, more manageable components is creating the work breakdown structure. Finding the work number of work periods needed to complete individual activities is estimating the activity durations. And all of this is going to be in our process groups practice guide. So we can check this out. Developing approaches to involve stakeholder, uh, project stakeholders based on their needs. That's planning stakeholder engagement. And lastly, developing the document that formally authorizes our project. That's our project charter. Let's double check. And that is wonderful stuff. Process groups practice guide if you want to check that out for yourself under all of those inputs Tools, technique, tools and techniques and outputs. Risk parameters. They are throwing all of the fun stuff at us today. Okay, the period of time we need to respond to the risk in for it to be effective. That is the urgency, I would say. And we can always shuffle these around if we need to. The ease with which the results of the risk can be recognized, that's how easily we can detect the risk. The period of time between the risk occurring and when we might discover it, that's how long it's lying dormant. So how, uh, what's the dormancy of the risk? And how related the risk is to other project risks? How connected is that risk to other project risks? Let's double check. Wonderful stuff. Well done. All right. A little bit tricky for those risk ones, but page 247, assessment of other risk factors. And only four to go in this little section. So you're doing an amazing job. Consider pair work, oh, agile scenarios. Okay, oh goodness me. Consider pair work, shoulder checks or code inspections, test driven development and workshop the definition of done. When are we going to do that? I think we're going to do that when we have too many defects. So we can workshop the definition of done Use test-driven development for quality and shoulder check and, and pair programming to make sure that uh, we're finding those defects. I think that would work. Reduce the story size, the user story size, and estimate with the people doing the work. We're going to use those things if we have inaccurate estimation in our team. These are tricky. Build in a Slack card to refactor code and ensure developers are part of user story creation. That's when we have technical debt. So we can build in a Slack card, which is just a card. Maybe it has five points uh, and that card goes into the sprint backlog and it takes up so that we're not using that velocity on other work. And then we can use that time to, um, to refactor the code and to improve the code to make it better for the future. Last one is going to be unclear team progress. And we do that when we, uh, if we can use a Kanban board and use daily standups to report blockers and to micro commit to what we're going to do in the next section. And if you want to see that, that's page 58, agile pain points and troubleshooting. And that's come through wonderful, wonderful stuff. All right. How did you guys go with that one? Last three. So project process groups, initiating the team is successfully defining project goals, securing stakeholder buy-in, and what's the keyword there? Creating that project charter. They're initiating a project. The team is working diligently to develop a detailed schedule, allocate resources, and define the project scope. I think, uh, well, I don't like the allocate resources, but defining the project scope is planning. Now, if the team is working actively to complete those deliverables, they are executing, 
coordinating team activities, yes, and managing resource objectives, yep, that sounds good. The manager is tracking progress, they're monitoring and controlling in the process groups, measuring performance and making adjustments, and if the team has completed all the deliverables and reviewed those outcomes and finalizing the documentation, maybe creating a final report there that is closing the project. And that is good. That's come through. So page 171 under process groups in the, Pro in the Pumbok Guide, 7th edition. Wonderful stuff. Okay, more agile scenarios. Oh, well, we got through the other ones pretty well. So let's see how we go. Reducing the story size and defining the definition of done. Maybe if, uh, oh, if work is not completed within sprints, we can reduce the story size and make sure we've got the definition of done really, really crisp. Ensure the servant leader or scrum master escalates, problem solves or clears obstacles if the team is struggling with obstacles. Hold retrospectives regularly with no more than three action items for next time uh, if there's no improvement in the team process. Very handy to do. And work with managers of, of external resources to dedicate them into our team so that uh, we can use the whole team approach. That's if we have siloed teams or people who aren't involved directly close with our project. Page 59, Agile Pain Points and Troubleshooting in the Agile Practice Guide. And that is very good, really good one to go through that one. Now, risks, issues, and change. If Billy wants to add a feature to project delivery and the scope is already baselined, he's going to need a change log. Exactly right. Well, I, I, I assume that's right. We can always move it. <laughs> but that seems like the most correct one. Um, let's see what, what else we've got just in case. One of the resources has been delayed, which is now impacting the project schedule. It's happening now. It is a project issue. Exactly right. The receiving organization tells you of a regulatory change impacting scope that could happen in the future. We're going to put that in our risk register because it is a risk. It's potentially, it could happen in the future. The team have estimated the activity durations, but noted they are only accurate with their current expertise. They are using assumptions. So making sure that we note those assumptions in the assumption log. And let's check those answers. They've come through as correct. Wonderful stuff. Page 185 under logs and registrars. Uh, yeah, I think that's correct. Pinbot Guide 7th edition 2021 if you want to check that out for yourself. And that was actually the last one in this session. So wonderful stuff. You've done an amazing job. We got this through that. It, the time just flew. And you know what they say about that is time flies when you're having fun. I know I was having fun and I hope you were too. But at the very least, I know that you are doing the right thing to prepare for your PMP exam and also to improve your life because project management is such an important skill, especially when you're delivering change or managing teams. It is something that's truly going to take your career to the next level and really, really improve your life. I know you can do it. I truly believe that you can pass the PMP exam and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.